Where was Gondol when the Westfall fell? Here I am, here I am, how do you do? Hello guys and welcome to the Beyond Sana's channel, my name is Shanks and that was a pretty interesting intro, am I right? <laughs> We have the green Gonzo player White Horse on the beautiful map Westfold against the red Mordor player Ilian Wood. And where was Gonzo when Westfold fell? Or are we gonna say by the end of this video where was Rohan when Westfold fell? Because I don't know who's gonna win yet, but I can tell you that much. Mordor is the favorite faction in this one. Definitely. Because that's a huge map and you have many many settlements as Mordor which will give you lots of money. And you will be able to scale quite hard into the mid to lead game. Golem start, dancing around the Rosie to try to deny the soldiers from capturing the settlement. In the meantime, he's splitting his starting two orc battalions to grab all the settlements. And remember, once you have four settlements, four Lamrimirs, you will get the full value of the wood bonus, which means 30% discount for every single building inside but also outside of your base. That's gonna make an orc pit, for example, which normally costs you 400 cheaper than 300 which is a huge save but you will actually notice this difference in expensive structures like troll cage and siege forest troll cage normally costs you 1200 and now it's gonna cost you only 840 instead it's gonna fight this but of course soldiers are stronger than orcs so they will be winning this fight even with column being around column is i believe a bit damaged if i'm not mistaken and in the worst case scenario Konde can always use the heal and he will be good to go. Heal is still available. And he will be healing up the, all the units and replace one dead man from the battalion. That's gonna make the soldiers once again full HP and full sized. In the meantime, Gondor was also able to capture one, two, three, four farms outside under his control. This mill is gonna be eventually taken down. But that's also fine for Mordor. He has still four settlements outside. Haradrim Palace is gonna be the first production building for the Haradrim units from the Haradrim Palace. They're gonna be also nice against the soldiers. But I believe they will be used mainly to creep the work layer and goblin layer around this side to capture this outpost and you can later on put those units inside the outpost for better protection. And also orc pit coming up at the same time. Remember orcs are for free in battle for middle of one. But on the other side they also don't deal that much damage. Steeble has to come up very very soon for the Gonzo player. He has now 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 farms outside. That's actually quite significant. I like that. But it's fine. Remember, Elamri Mills are giving you more money in compared to the settlements like farms, blacksmiths, furnaces and even slaughterhouses. So especially on a map like Westworld, when there are a bunch of trees around the Elamri Mills, you will never run out of money as long as you can keep them protected. And with the Haradrims now being on the field, that should be also easy to do. The farm here is going to be taken down. They're going to almost hit level 2. But remember, I was gone already. If I would be still available, they would hit level 2 with that. And that's gonna be a huge power spike because level 2 units are hitting like an absolute track and also have to sustain over time when they are able to get away. Hurry, and also this settlement is gonna be taken down. Actually, Gondor is doing a phenomenal job. You know, doing the best what the faction offers. You don't have many, many more choices. But he was losing this farm, unfortunately, which is not the end of the world. Stable is coming up now for the Gondor player. He will need those Gondor Knights on the field as soon as possible in order to be able to fight for the map control and... Deny Mordor to creep every single Vork layer slash Goblin layer uncontested. The farm is going to be secured by the Gonzo player. This Gondor Knights are almost level 2. That's going to be also pretty nice. They're going to hit way harder. Remember, in Battle for Middle of 1 level, levels actually mean a lot. Like, the power spike from level 1 to level 2 unit is massive. And those Haradrims, they need to be careful because they are quite weak against Hobbits like Peregrine took. Peregrine with the throw rocks, ability can actually two-shot them quite easily while being tanky against the Haradrims at the same time. And once again, that's the perfect situation. You want to use the orcs as like a body blocking unit and your Haradrims are going to be the damage dealers of your army. And once you are done with the work layer, you will also get the money from the creep, which is going to be enough to make you rich <laughs> to capture this outpost right after. Mordor is almost full base. He has still one, two, three mills outside, four mills actually outside. The mill here is going to be protected eventually, so I'll just start hitting level two, but you see what I'm trying to say, right? Obed is able to kill those Haradrims in no time. Look at the damage output with the throw rocks. 
Radrims, but also soldiers of Rune Leader on are actually quite vulnerable against heroes. Tolkish is coming up. That's quite interesting. I didn't see that coming. I was expecting him to get a Nazgul on the field first. But I believe he want to just feel a bit more safe. Trolls gonna make sure that your base is kind of protected. While Nazgul might be a tricky choice, you know. Because not only you are getting a lot of money in this map, but also Gondo is getting a lot of money in this map. And he might get those Night Shield upgraded Gondo Knights very, very soon on the field. But once again, you want to use your first Gondo Knight, and that's very important to keep killing the enemy meals. The creeps are not running away from you. Don't waste time on creeping. You can always use your second or your third Gondo Knight to creep. And your early game should be always, uh, you know, kind of invested into taking as many Lamry meals down as you possibly can from the model player. Otherwise, Mordor is going to grow rich and you can't control the game anymore. Full base. The first troll is going to be clicked very soon. He was also capturing this outpost. Like mentioned before, he was placing those Haradrims inside the outpost for some more protection. He has done the same thing around this side. So he has now two out of four outposts under his control. And with the Haradrims inside, it's going to be hard for the Gondor player to commit against that. Because the Gondor Knights are not dealing that much damage to the outpost in battle for middle of one. They will need ages and that's going to give the Haradrims the chance to take them down one by one. Also leading now to the bottom right side with the Easterlings. He has I and Tainted Land, but both of them are on cooldown. He has to fight for this farm. But he needs a troll for that reason. He was also not getting any soldiers of rune on the field yet, which I would recommend to do because they are yeah, of course they are expensive, but they are great against Gondor Knights. And with them you can also pressure the enemy farms. Trolls, they should not be sent out that much. Because in the worst case scenario, Gondor can always get Faramir, and that's gonna give him the chance to finally show his quality. Smart move from the Gondor player, but I don't think he has the chance to, kept, uh, to keep this outpost protected yet. We will see about that. I, yeah, never, never mind. He has now the second Gondor Knight. They're gonna go for a trample potentially. Stopping just in time. Very, very important what he did, by the way. Because if you trample them down, they're gonna act like a pikeman. And you might take a lot of damage from the trample. Industry has been used now. On the slaughterhouses inside the base, the troll is on the field. Where is the troll though? Ah, he's sending the troll to the outpost. He doesn't want him to actually buy uh, or get some archers on the field. And troll can't be dealt with, dealt with you know? Gondo has nothing that can deal with the troll just yet, but that's about to be changed because Faramir, the captain of Gondo, is getting recruited right now. And once again, on this map, money should not be a problem. Both the players have now many, many settlements under his control, under their control. And Gondor player is a little bit more, but that's gonna be also changed eventually very, very soon. Troll is running it down. Be careful. Faramir is gonna be on the field very, very soon. And the warning arrow from Faramir is able to deal 50% of the HP. <laughs> Look, this Lumber Mills. <laughs> the Lumber Mills are... Go the Lumber Mill workers are going to war. 3,000 years later, they will be potentially able to destroy this farm. They are dealing almost no damage, but they are very efficient if you don't know against ants. So if you are playing Isengard against or Morde against uh, Rohan and he's recruiting some ants, you can use your Lamer Mill workers and attack them. You will be surprised about the damage output they have against those trees. Oh, the troll was running it down. Archers level 2 now because of the statue. They have 100% more combat experience, which means they are able to level up twice as fast. Morde has to play a bit more smart. And he also finally has to take this mill behind this base pack. That's pretty unfortunate. Like, he has only two mills left on the field. And all the other settlements are under control from the uh, Gonzo player. So Gondo is gonna grow rich eventually. He has also enough power points for Gandalf to fight. I like the way that he's building two, uh, two of the archer ranges to actually put those archers inside the outpost for some more protection. But eventually, you will need to make the transition into the rangers instead. Rangers are the best archers DPS-wise. And if you don't know, they are even able to win the 1v1 against Elven Warriors fully upgraded. Remember? You know, the uh, Rangers, they have no chance of getting heavy armor, unlike Elves. But even if Elves get heavy armor, they fight 1v1 against Rangers, Rangers are gonna win this. But they are glass cannons, of course. Elves are having a bit more range, and also they are being a bit more tanky against, like, horses, for example, while Rangers are gonna get just one-shotted. But they are having an increased damage boost against monsters like trolls and moment kills and even fell beasts or the witch king later on. So they are for that reason the best archer to put inside our outpost. Just because of the high intense and insane DPS they have. 
But you see, soldiers of Rune are getting bullied by Farami, of course. Farami is able to kill them in no time. When he's shooting at them, you see how much damage he's able to deal. Farami is also leadership once he's level 5. Maybe you can also get Boromir on the field, but now he has more than enough money for Gandalf. He has also the power points he needs to turn the Gandalf the Grey into the Gandalf the White. Mordor is still to outpost, though. So he has 3 furnaces on each side. 6 furnaces, plus he has a full base with 1, 2, 3, 4 mils. So he is gonna be in a good spot, trust me on that one. He might also go for the Mumma kills, but it looks like that's not gonna be the case. He wants to actually recruit some combos with Drama Troll leadership. I don't like this playstyle. I feel like, you know, having a mobile unit like a Nazgul or even potentially the Witch King is gonna give you much more control of the scheme. You can this way protect yourself against the Gondonites a bit easier. You know, Gandalf all alone is not gonna be able to kill the Witch King unless he's able to land both the spells, Lightning Swords and Easter Light exclusively on the Fell Beast. And you can easily dodge this. And on top of that, you have also insane amount of leadership you will be able to get from the Witch King. 50% more damage and 50% more armor. Nearly 4 power points collected. Look how much money he has. Do you see that, guys? It's insane, am I right? Just build a marketplace in this kind of situations. Get Grand Harvest for 40% more resource income from the farms outside and you will be golden. 40% from this mini farms. That's gonna be a next level. Gandalf almost out. Archer range level 2. Fire upgrade is getting purchased. I mean, he has enough money to buy all the upgrades he needs, really. He <laughs> yeah, there we go. Gandalf is on the field, ladies and gentlemen. A wizard arrives precisely when he means to. Where is he? He's here at the, at the outpost at the bottom left side. He was in the archer range. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. With Gandalf, now you have the chance to run around the map, to wizard blast some of the enemy we units, to kill city. some of the trolls. But Gandalf is not going to be as impactful as you might think in this matchup. Because once more there's the leadership he's looking for, and with that I mean like Drama Troll, Darkness later on, and even Witch King, you will not even be able to hurt those trolls with your Easter Light anymore. So you need Rangers. And you eventually also need Boromir, because Boromir is the only way, beside the statue, that Gondor can use to get additional damage leadership, which is going to be needed to burst down those trolls and Nazgûls and the Witch King a bit faster. You will need this damage boost. 60% is quite significant. And if you fight around the statue, you will have in total with the statue together 160% damage boost once Boromir is level 4. Which is kind of going to take you some time. On the bright side, once you recruit Boromir, he's going to be on the field with level 3. So you will need only one more level to be, you know, effective with the, with the captain of Gondor. The outpost has been taken down. Here's also the night shield upgrade. Faramir is level 4. He is actually coming with Faramir because if you don't know, Faramir's warning arrow in combination with the Easter Light from Gandalf is able or enough to one shot a Nazgul from 100 to 0. However, that is not being the case for uh, the Fel for the for the Witch King. And there comes the big commitment now from Mordor. That's gonna be tough and hard to defend. He has, you know, runes in the front side to absorb the damage. Drama troll behind with trolls with rogs. Just to be able to bully, bully Gandalf, because Gandalf uh, has to stand still to cast his abilities. And the second he does that, you can actually target Gandalf with your trolls. They're gonna throw those rocks from a safe distance, and that might be enough to burst down Gandalf from 100 to 0. The outpost is gonna be taken down in a matter of you know, a couple of seconds. Trolls are going now back, which is needed, I believe, because he's about to lose his entire base. Haradrim Paris is going down. His Aplas is available from Gandalf. Parami has to be careful. But in the meantime, Mordo was able to destroy this outpost. He might be able to save this ranges, which would be, which would be nice. They're only level 1. You might also need Banner. He's gonna use the Lightning Sword. Beautiful one here from Gandalf. He was able to slay down two of the mountain trolls from Mordo. And with that being said, he can keep moving on. Easter Light can be used now against the last troll. That's gonna be also the keys. He, won't, he will get one shot at it still. So pretty nice from Gandalf. Level 6 already. Drama Troll is a sportive unit, not a fighter. So you can't really do much besides knocking them on the ground, but you won't deal that much damage, especially now when, especially when Farami is hitting level five, as he is now. So now they have so much, so much armor, uh, armor leadership. That's crazy. Fifty percent from Farami, fifty percent from Gandalf, and they have all the, also the shields, which is making them almost invincible against arrows. You see them tanking for ages. Gandalf is knocking him down with the Wizard Blast, auto attacking twice. That's gonna be enough to kill him. Maybe one more attack. Yeah, he's also down. He killed many trolls, but Farami is taking a lot of damage. 
And for now, Gondor players deciding to disengage. But in the meantime, take a look into the minimap at the bottom left side of your screen. The map is turning more and more into the color of Mordor. Red is the color, of course, is the uh, evil faction in this 1v1 against Gondor. Gond Stoneworker now, okay? Into the battle tower and keep archers. That's a, that's called laser towers in battle for middle of one. That's gonna make those towers hit like an absolute truck. And even with massive leadership, you will still receive a lot of damage. Gondor is known for a strong defense. With the Nomonorian Stoneworker, you can also make your wall, you know, bright and also way tankier than any other wall will be ever in battle for middle of one. So it's gonna be double the health of almost then in compared with the Rohan wall, for example. And with the uh, reinforced gate, you will also get 50% hit points to the gate. So you can make it from 3000 up to 4500 health. Gandalf is level 7. That's one of the few matchups in which a water of power is not gonna be that great. It's good against combos, but not that great against Fell Beasts or the Witch King or even the Trolls. They won't receive too much leadership. Talking about a the Nazgul, there comes the Nazgul. The level um, 7 or level 9, rather. Level 8, sorry. <laughs> Try again. Gondor Knight is gonna be unfortunately taken down. He's running into the combos and he can't survive this. Gondor now has to rotate from the top side. Archer range is only level 1. Remember, he lost the Archer range level 2 at the bottom right side. That means no more rangers any soon. But he's trying to build himself a strong defense. That's why I was saying that Marketplace would be a nice choice. He would be getting so much mo more money by now. Paramir can get dismounted and use the... Yeah, that's, look the combination. You see that now, guys? Oh, this guy was not using the warning arrow. Even now, he was almost able to one-shot the Fell Beast. That's how powerful Gandalf is. He has to be because he's the most expensive hero. Since you need to invest 6k and then also 2 power points. That makes him, in my opinion, also more expensive than Witch King. Since also for Mordor, it's a bit easier to collect the money in compared for Gondor. He can always peel back and heal up over time. Not a big deal. Level 10 Gondor Knights. Lightning Sword is available. Can be used against the Citadel to take it down. The second Fell Beast is on its way. That's a mistake from Mordor. I believe the better call would be to save for the Witch King. I see you. I see you. I hope Sauron is being used, but I believe it's not gonna be... Oh, 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 be careful with Faramir and Gandalf. I believe they are fine. They are fine, but the level 10 Gondor Knight might not be fine. Uh, yeah. The level 10 Gondor Knight has been taken down. That's unfortunate. He lost now two highly ranked Gondor Knights already within 30 seconds. I mean, he might go for the, for the Cloud Break. Because you can't get the Eagle Allies, uh, Eagle Allies Summon unlocked from the Spellbook of Gondor without going for the Elven Allies. So you can't get from Gandalf two Eagles. But if you want to get to the point in which you can summon the army of the dead, that's the best thing you can do. You pick Heal, Gandalf the White, Cloud Break and Army of the Dead. That's the fastest way of reaching to the point in which you are able to summon the AOD. Which also is not that great in this matchup because you can't target or Oh oh! Is that Blast? But they don't even die, guys. They don't even die. They have, like, only <laughs> Drama Troll and Darkness for now. They don't even have I or the Witch King yet. Imagine them having this. Even now, Gandalf was not even able to deal too much damage to them, you know? They have only two leaderships out of four possible. Okay? The best thing you can do is try to kill the Drama Troll. Until this is gonna happen, he has to use heal. Gondor, uh, the Troll has been taken down. Look, look, he's gonna die, right? The damage is insane. Look at this damage from the combos now. Drama Troll is not even nearby. They have only darkness right now, guys. That's unbelievable. Temple is incoming. The statue is the next focus to make sure that they are not having any more leadership. Gandalf is gonna go for a juice with Zaplast once again. Use Cloud Break before. Zaplast it. Can he get away? He's playing with fire. He's gonna be taken down. That's how powerful the leadership system is in Battle for Middle Earth 1. Gondor Knights gone. Gandalf gone, and the outpost gone as well. Faramir is gonna be able to survive. To get another day in which he might potentially show his quality. Cloud break, yeah, it's, you know, the problem, you see the money from Gondor now, that's the biggest problem he has. He has to now invest over 2,000 to revive his Gandalf. That was a really risky move, which was not even that uh, successful. Stormworker is gonna keep him protected for now, but remember, Mordor can always get some catapults on the field. And also keep in mind, 
that Moro Catapults are able to get leadership from the Drama Troll, which is going to make them tankier and also hit harder. That's going to still take you some time until you are able to break the wall because of the Numenorean Stormwork upgrades and demolish the Siege Works or the um, Stormworker after you buy all the upgrades. It's just a waste of spot. spot. The only thing you get from it is like 20% cost reduction for your uh, towers or your trebuchets on top of the wall. But... You know, you don't want to waste a spot in your in your base like that. Just build a farm or a blacksmith instead. And if he loses this outpost, he will have also no production buildings on the field anymore. And I believe that's inevitable. It's going to be taken down in no time. He has nothing to defend himself with. The rangers are moving now to the bottom left outpost, which is unprotected. And I'm assuming he will be able to take it down. Gandalf is going to still take some time until, until he is back on the menu. And he needs a lot for the army of the dead. Mordo needs only 14 and a half power points. And Mordo is generally able to collect the power points a bit faster than the good factions like Gondor or Rohan. Because you also get power points from losing units like Felbys, Nazguls, Witch King, Orcs. Evil factions are for that reason that uh, that's the main reason why Balrog will cost you 20 power points. While EOD costs you only 10. Because collecting power points once again is easier with evil. And Felbys are coming now. Use warning arrow, try to burst one of them down. Warning arrow, you see the damage now from warning arrow? Pew! You see that burst, guys? Just like in the films, when he was forcing the fell beast to retreat with his warning arrow, which is quite powerful. He has only one, two, three, four farms outside of, of the map, and Mordor has almost full map control. Like untouched outposts with level 3 furnaces, and full base with like almost level 3 slaughterhouses all over the place. The Witch King is now on the field, the leader of the nine. You can revive the Nazguls for free in battle for Middle Earth 1. That's kind of dope if you ask me, but the revive time is actually quite long, so you will need to wait a lot. That's why losing them is always a bad thing, even though you can revive them for free. Okay, Mumakil Pen is coming up, Siege Force is coming up, Mordor is gonna be rich. Industry is gonna be available soon again. If in the worst case scenario, you can always go for the Scavenger or for the devastation to get even more money. Warning arrow, as you can see, that you know does zero damage to Witch King. Witch King is, of course, the leader of the Nazgûls. By using it against the Fell Beast, he could have taken it, taken him potentially down. But the Witch King is a bit more resistant. Oh, but Gandalf is on the fields now. Can he do something about that? Look, the Fell Beast. He's tanking this archers for ages and one-shotting the Rangers in return. He's gonna get in safety. Farami doesn't hurt him that much. And Gonda is left with only three farms outside for now. And the siege is going to begin eventually with Mumakils. Remember, Mumakils are not able to receive leadership from Drama Trolls, but they are able to get leadership from the Darkness and from the Witch King. As well as from the Eye of Sauron. And Mumakils are generally quite tanky against anything but fire. So the only possible way you can kill them is either having trebuchets with fire stone upgrades or lots of rangers with fire. Cloudbreak will be used now. He's going for a juicy Visa Blast. Cloudbreak is also able to reduce the armor of the enemy units. But even then, they are not getting one shot. The Darkness was used just before the Visa Blast. And you see how much damage he was able to deal? Witch King wasn't even nearby. I was not even used. That's how strong these combos are. One of them is level 10. And let's be honest, leveling up those combos to level 10 isn't the hardest task. Because you have so much extra combat experience. 200 person only from the Drama Troll. In 100% from the Eye of Sauron, it means 300% you will be able to level up 3 times as fast. And killing Gandalf means for a combo from, you know, hitting from level 1 to level 10 in a single second. With this much combat experience. And Gondo is struggling leadership wise. Unlike, Theo unlike Rohan or Isengard even. Isengard has the chance to nullify all the leadership bonuses at least. But Gondo is struggling. Like Gandalf's leadership is not the greatest. Like, I would trade the combat experience every day of the week, you know, for damage leadership. Damage leadership is very important in many situations, especially in this matchup. It's quite important because the units you want to kill, you want to kill them fast. If they're ever going to make it to you and make it to your archers, they're going to one-shot you. Regardless how much armor, exp armor leadership you have, ranges are still weak. Okay. Parami is getting knocked back or knocked down on the ground. Is he gonna die? Nah, he's fine. Look, the warning arrow is gonna deal almost no damage against him. You will see what I mean. He's casting it. He won't kill him. You see? Warning arrow is 
not effective at all. And again, in those kind of situations, it makes kind of sense that you want to kill the Witch King instead of the Nazgul. But make sure to kill the guy first, you know you will 100% be able to kill him. And with the Easter Light and Warning Arrow, he would be easily able to one-shot the Nazgul from 100 to 0. Witch King is getting away, will be healing up over time. We have now Catapults on the field, Muma kills on the field, Combo level 10, Drama Troll, everything what is needed for the victory. Look the money from Mordor, over 10,000. We can't say the same about, about Gondor. He has still one empty spot. He was just demolishing the Stormwork, I believe. He has like two farms left on the field and that's pretty much it. Only one of them. Actually, both of them are only level 2. Full map under, Mo under Mordor. I can't even talk. Under Mordor's control, guys. It's kind of insane. How strong Mordor is once you give him the chance to fight for the map control. And with now three flying heroes around, it's going to be hard to contest and keep fighting for the map control. And without having map control, without having farms outside, you will have also not so seen in your economy, which will allow you to keep spamming units and units all the time. Yes, full towers, yes, but the thing is, the towers, they will, they will get outranged by the catapults. And committing against the catapults is also easier said than done because, you know, he has level 10 and level 8 combos around this area. They're gonna kill your pikemen or your horses in this case in no time. Your heroes like Gandalf will also not survive a single second. Just pick Alvin Wood from the spellbook and go for a sneaky little beautiful Wizard Blast. Remember, Alvin Wood is able to nullify enemy leadership bonuses. So ideally, you wanna use the Wizard Blast just before the before you use Wizard Blast, like a second before you wanna use the Alvin Wood to make sure that they have lost every leadership. And then you can one-shot the entire combo battalion. And eventually get him level 10. Which might be needed. Even though I don't think that this is going to be a game changing moment. Gandalf is a bit more impactful in many other matchups. Like against Rohan. Against even Isengard. But not that much against Mordor. Also the host of this game is the Gondor player Whitehorse. But you know once again. That's a matchup. Which can be better for Gonzo on a small map like Forts of Eisen, but Westfold is just like a Mordor map. You know, Mordor is the strongest faction in this map. Okay. Uma kill. Level almost 9. 5 power points away. Gandalf has to be careful. He's taking so much damage. And Witch King was not even nearby once again. I mean, he was able to deal a decent amount of damage, I guess. Farami has leadership. He needs two more trebuchets. To get the workshop to level 2 for this Firestone upgrade. That's going to be also needed. But keep in mind that Mordokatas are going to be stronger. You need to hit them 3 times while they, will only hit the, uh, while they only need to hit you twice. Because they have leadership from Dramatrol. Which makes them tankier and also hit harder. And Mordo is 12 power points away. Look his money. Like he has enough money to lose everything that he got. And to replace everything not only once but even 3 times. That's how much money he got. He needs to be a bit fast though, you don't want to, you know, the thing is, you don't want to give Gondor too much time either, because Gondor is the best summons in the game, like with Eagle summon, Rohirrim summon, Elven summon, you have like three summons, not even talking about the army of the dead summon. Like with these three summons, you can use them over and over again, to eventually fight for the map control, Eagle summon is extremely powerful in this matchup against Mordor, because Eagles can even kill the Witch King in a couple of seconds. He's not paying attention. Okay, it's, it's he's gone. Oh, he was not using the warning arrow. He's using... The... Oh my goodness. He right-clicked and he was trying to kill the Lamrimil worker. <laughs> no way. Okay. I mean, that's kind of fiesta. That's why you should never right-click. Because the right-click in Battle for Middle Earth 1 is not the smartest thing to do. The Nazgul has to be careful though, he can always use Lightning Sword, keep that in mind. Lightning Sword on a Fell Beast all alone is able to one-shot that target. Oh, he's actually... You, in those kind of situations, you need to make sure that they are not able to automatically attack. By clicking on Auto Acquire, um, to make them, you know... This way you need to manually right-click on a target. Because if you don't do that, they will just attack anything that comes close to them. Darkness is available, I believe Claw Break as well, they have the same cooldown. Lightning Sword will be used on these trolls. They have no leadership around. Drama Troll is not nearby. Witch King is not nearby either. So it's kind of tough. I believe Mordor is struggling because his full command points kept. He can't get any more units on the field. That's why the money is kind of pointless too. 
He has to make a move now. It's a lot of money or command points invested into these combos. I believe he's just waiting for the recovery. Maybe we want to get some more katas before he's going to go for attack. We will see about that. Okay. Darkness has been used. And there comes the commitment finally from Mordo. Is Kondo prepared for this one? I believe the Mordo play is a bit too scared, you know? Yes, you, now you need to move. Because now you have used the darkness already. Now is the time for you to shine. Let's, make use of this catapult. Let's see catapult damage. Yeah, it's quite decent. Remember, this is the upgraded Gondor Wall with Numenori and Stoneworker to make it extremely tanky. But it's a matter of time. And he will be able to break through it. And once he's done it, he can just be patient. You know, you don't need to rush into the base and face tank those arrow towers for no reason. You can just play it smart, keep your distance like you do, and take down the base slowly but surely. Because going inside might give you... I mean, might give your opening the chance to actually get the army of the dead summon. And it can go downhill. Nice one. He's actually hitting his own Mumma kill. Two of the uh, catapults are gone. He has to use heal. That's a waste of heal now. Oh, man. I mean, he has to kind of do that because he has no stable left on the field anymore, right? Yeah. He has only two Gundam Knights. So losing one of them means like you lose 50% of, uh, of your army. I don't know why he's not building a stable or archer range. Like, yes, money now. Yes, money. He's going for the siege from the bottom left side. But those katas are kind of unprotected. Gandalf. Oh, I missed that. I mean, that's what I'm trying to say. When your heal is on cooldown, you don't want to commit. Look, the, uh, the towers are dealing no damage. The camp has begun now. <laughs> Gondo is actually putting catapults around the base. Spamming katas only. Microing with the kata. Do not get shot by this catapult from Mordor. Arami is getting dismounted. He has enough money barely to revive Gandalf. Mordor is just playing it a bit patient. Let's scroll forward to see what's going on. Because the game is kind of a bit slowed down now. Uh, we gotta take a look, take a look always into the citadel from Gandalf uh, from Gondor. Gandalf is back on the field. Now the game is gonna continue, hopefully. Two power points only away from getting to the point for the army of the dead. I believe what Mori is trying to do is just wait patiently, fist some power points to get to the point in which you can summon the Balrog. But also Katas or Trebuchets in this case from Gondo are able to hurt Balrog big time. I mean, just commit. I would just commit now and even if you lose the army, but you know, remember what I was saying, like even if you lose army as Mordo, you will get power points. And then you can use your Balrog in, co in combination with your uh, two Nazgûls and the Witch King, which is going to be more than enough to destroy the entire Gondor base. And he has not a single outpost outside, which means he will be defeated once he's once he lost the outpost. Oh, the Witch King has been taken down. Gandalf is almost level 10. Oh my goodness. Cloud Break, level 10. Don't I? Does he have heal? Yeah, he has heal, but he doesn't want to risk the biscuit, which is okay. Just peel back, heal up. Oh, he's... Never mind. He's, he's like, okay... Let's risk the biscuit. Oh, no, Star Chris. And I believe, yeah, he has, he got so many power points from this fight. Holy quack, I'm only 14 now. He has enough for the army of the dead. And this might be a tricky situation. Gondor was camping it, out, camping it out, but I believe Mordor was playing a bit too safe. Like, he has units at the bottom left side doing absolutely nothing. He has enough money to build multiple siege works and to siege from multiple sides at the same time. And Gondor can't answer that. Gondor has not enough units to do that. Okay. So 15 power points collected. 5 away from getting, of course, the Balrog summon. But, uh, you know, the thing is that Gondor can always use the army of the dead to take down enemy Balrog. And if he does that, he will be able to defend himself over and over again. And for that reason, Mordor has to... Look for a different solution by spamming lots of catapults. Maybe don't make Muma kills because they cost you a lot of command points. But he will also need some eagles very soon because, um, the, you know, I mean, he will need combos very soon because eagles can destroy all your Muma kills, catapults, and even your trolls in no time. And you need damage. You need to be able to shoot at these flying eagles very soon against Gondor. Army of the Dead might be used around this side to kill those trolls. 
But once again, Mordo is getting closer and closer. He's just waiting. He's just, you know, playing it very patiently. But don't give Kondo too much time, like mentioned a couple of times. Okay, he was able to get, kill one of the Katas. Okay, Lightning Swords from Gandalf and all the trolls are going down. Kondo is able to hold himself in the game without using the army of the dead yet. Look at the money from Mordo, do you see that? He has over 65,000. That's a big commitment, wrong commitment. It's, why, why are you doing that? Like, this Kanda is, Kanda is level 10 now. His abilities are hurting much more. And this Witch King is gonna be unfortunately taken down. He's running it down pretty much. He needs still 3 power points. I mean, more there's a lot of eco. Farami has been taken down in the meantime. We released the mountain troll. We need more than that. I mean, you just build like multiple furnaces, uh, multiple siege works. Not Mumma kill pen. Building two Mumma kill pens when you are almost command points capped is just a big mistake. Alvin allies, that's the power of Gondo. Now he will get the chance to summon multiple allies, elves, Rohirrim, and also Eagles. Mumma kill is tanky. Witch King is still dead. He will be losing this outpost too. Mumma kill was trying to charge, but it's a little bit too late. It's extremely slow unit. And you see, Gondo is all of a sudden turning this game around. Army of the Dead is available since a really long time. He's not using it, but I'm assuming he's trying to save it for the enemy Balrog summon. He knows he has to defend his main castle. It's very important. I mean, I can't believe that. Like, uh, <laughs> this mortal player, I think he stopped playing the game. I mean, he's playing it really boring and extremely... Uh, Careful, I don't want to even say careful because he's making mistakes over mistakes and just commit like if you have this much sustain your eco Just commit and try to deal damage and try to get to the Baldrog summon already He needs one power point. I mean he's been now look this this witch king is staying there forever and does do nothing Oh, oh now he has to be careful slap 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 He has to use heal and off the white is gonna get in safety This Nazgul needs ages to take him down Alvin summon, just kill them and get finally Balrog summon, finally Balrog summon, guys. Gandalf is level 10 for a long time. Balrog summon will be used for whatever reason here to kill this couple of archers. And also the Gondor Knights, I mean, he will need to use the EOD. I would love to see Balrog against Gandalf, but I'm assuming that's not going to be the case because the power points or powers from Gandalf are on cooldown. He's demolishing everything inside the base to build statues. That's a bit harder to reach for the fire breath. For the, for the fire breath. Army of the Dead has been used. I mean, why would you do this and do, do this at the same time? It's gonna breath fire. Also, it's able to kill the army of the dead if you don't know. Look how much he was able to kill. Only few of them are remaining on the field. Towers are not hurting him at all. And he lost the Tita once again. How much money does Gonda have? Not really a lot. Like. He's down quite a lot. Just fly to the outpost, I guess. You can use the wings all the time. Like, it has almost no cooldown. Watch this. The second you land, it's almost back up. So you can use this and fly all the time, you know? He will die to the towers, by the way. Can he take down this archer range? Yes. I believe that was the best thing he could do. He was beating off the army of the dead summon defensively. But still de dealing this number. Oh, Farami, the Balrog Slayer. Oh my goodness. Level 10. Just like that. Nice. But look what's happening in the meantime. Look what's happening in the meantime. It's almost enough to one-shot, but not yet. And he will never be able to one-shot him. That's the maximum level, uh, maximum amount of damage you can deal to a Nazgul. I believe now we will have like no not, no action going on until the next Balrog summon. Because the uh, mortal player is playing so extremely slow. We release the mountain troll, just watch him staying there for like 5 minutes doing absolutely nothing. You see him? Army of the Dead, I mean, War of Power once again, was used. Eagle summon, now we are talking. The trolls, now he has no archers around anymore. Uma kills, fighting, doing something for the map control. The eagles are gonna be gone very soonish. Alvin Elias will be used, Lightning Sword. Trolls are going inside, but they have no protection. 
two of them only. They can't do much. The Witch King has to be careful too. Easter Light is available from Gandalf. It's gonna be enough to kill him. We are getting more Muma kills on the field. And the attacks are coming from this area. They are taking a lot of damage from the Eagles. Because no leadership right now. But you can see, like, the Muma kills, they are tanky against arrows, you know? And they will also deal a lot of damage if the Witch King would be nearby. But it's gonna be a different story against Rangers. Rangers are hitting like a truck. Balrog summon was used also uh, defensively to kill the enemy army once again. And Gondo is down to only one single castle. Tower is gonna be taken down. The trolls are dying one by one against the, uh, against the towers. Just kill the towers in this kind of situations. Army of the Dead will be used once again defensively. He has to do that because otherwise Balrog is able to kill the entire base by himself. Breath fire to deal to kill damage uh, to kill two blacksmiths in the Zitter. It's gonna fly away, I believe. Cloud break was used to slow down the enemy units and weaken their armor and stun them when they're level one only. I believe Kondo has uh, actually he has still you know good amount of money. Like he can still make something happen. Fly once again, kill the siege wargs. I believe that's the best thing you can do. Or level three furnace. Uh, I mean the blacksmith. You can, you have enough time with Balrog normally to use Breath Fire twice. I believe even almost three times if you use it immediately when you summon him. And yeah, that's the most of his resource income. He has only level one blacksmiths left now in his base. Breath Fire is gonna just go down. It has been taken down and he has to now invest one more thousand into reviving this. So he has, uh, the only reason why he's still in the game is Gandalf. Parami is also level 10. He will be able to destroy this outpost. And we might see yet another Balrog summon. He has now 17 power points collected. Just get everything unlocked. Just get Elvin Wood. Just get Rohirrim allies. I don't know why you are not doing that anyway. With the Rohan allies, you might use them to fight for the map control. To get some farms under your control finally. The level 3 furnace are going down. Eagle summon once again. Darkness has been used. For whatever reason. Mordo is trying to reclaim. The Muma kills have no defense. And Eagles are taking them down one by one. But in this stage of the game, doesn't really matter what you feed. Because your opponent has already level 10 heroes and he has all the power points anyway. Now, trust me, now it's about who has more money. Who has more to see in the economy. And that's out of the question, right? Mordo has so much more money. Like, he has over 75,000. That's kind of insane. Like, you can do whatever you want with this much money. You can make like five troll creatures and spam like mountain trolls and drama trolls all the time. You can do the same with siege works and boomer kill pens. You can always out spam Mort Gonzo and he will never be able to compete. He has to deal with Balrog summon once again. <laughs> but we, that's gonna be like the same situation in which he will be summoning the AOD. Try to defend himself. So we see the same situation over and over again and that's why I'm saying like Mordo has to find a solution into doing stuff without relying on the Balrog because Balrog can't do much when you have to deal with the army of the dead all the time. Oh we missed a lot of power here. I saw the animation. Okay, he was at least able to destroy the Zitza I guess. What a long game this is. But Mordo is playing it so slow. Like, he has so many options, you know? What is this Mumoki looking like? Okay, finally. <laughs> he was looking like a flap. One of the Nazgûls has been taken down. Gandalf is in a safe spot. Taking damage for no reason. Oh, Gandalf! 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 Oh, no! This troll is the Gandalf Slayer. Getting from level 1 to level 6 in a single second. Gandalf is down and the question is, does he have money to revive him? Barely. Reviving a level 10 Gandalf costs you 3000. Ironically, it's less than reviving a level 10 Aragorn. Level, level 10 Aragorn will cost you 3500. Which kind of doesn't make sense because recruiting Aragorn is 3500. Recruiting Gandalf on the other side is 6000. The Witch King has been taken down. Mordo is once again full map control. Uh, we see only two farms outside or one farm outside so far for the Gonzo. He has a couple of blacksmiths inside the base. But, you know, many of them are only level 1. That, that's not true. Like, two of them are level 1, all the others are level 2. 
30 power points collected and he was never getting the Elvin Wood allies. Uh, I mean the Elvin Wood or the Rohan allies yet. Put those archers inside the Tita. Level 10. Gone the nice, they don't care. Moma kill has been taken down. By the way, Bonding Arrow is dealing bonus damage to the Moma kills too. Maybe you will get the chance to see that if he ever uses that on the Moma kill. Okay. I believe he was losing every Nazgul in the Witch King, yeah. He needs to revive them all. Luckily, and uh, you can do that for free. And I mean, not that Mordor, Mordor needs money. Mordor has so much money. But he's just playing with like two troll cages. Just get like four, five, you know. Just get like three siege works here. Spam units all the time. You have enough money to do that. Don't make orcs. Why would you make orcs in the late game? They are for... They are bad, you know. They are only good for the early game. Just demolish the orc pit. Make Haradrim pallets. Put the Haradrims on top of the moment kill. This way you have also damage output against... Oh, 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 oh. Trample? Trample? Oh, no. He didn't trample him. I mean, I believe they lost the focus now of the game. They are both playing really sloppy. <laughs> Okay. Now he's trying to commit. Now he's making a move finally. Killing trebuchet. Uh, let's skip a bit forward. Eagle summon. This outpost is going to be taken down. Balrog summon once again. He has to use army of the dead. If he wants to be able to survive this. Gandalf is not going to make it out, right? Oh. Gandalf is out. Gandalf, kill Balrog. Come on. Use Fire Whip on Gandalf. Use it. Oh my goodness. This Balrog is sleeping. Oh. Oh man. Now Muma kills Commitment. Oh my goodness. Now it's a different story. Now it's the Invasion. Now it's the Invasion, guys. Balrog is down. There is Gandalf at. Gandalf can't really do much about this situation. Gondor is still two outposts under his control though. He's building multiple farms as he has to. But you see the Gondor base is gonna look like Mordor base very soon. And he has not much left. The Eagle Summon is on cooldown. Finally, after a really long time, he's finally picking the Alvin Wood and the Rohan allies. I cannot believe that. Same also with Mordor. Just get the Scavenger. And he doesn't he didn't pick Scavenger just yet. You see? Oh, Gandalf is getting trampled down. And that's a one-shot. <laughs> you can just one-shot Gandalf like that with Muma kill. Muma kills are pretty much one-shotting everything when they are able to trample them down. And now I believe he doesn't have the money, right? Nope, he doesn't have the money to get Gandalf back on the field. The base is wide open. He has not much left in his base anymore. So he might be able to kill the Tita once again. Parami is doing a great job. Shooting. But look at the Gonda base in the meantime. It's down quite a lot. In the meantime, Mordor was also able to destroy this outpost at the top, top side of the map. He's gonna move on to destroy this one right after. Gandalf can't get recruited. He has not much left. He has only one level 2 blacksmith and that's two level 2 blacksmiths and that's it. And now he's moving from the top side, which doesn't make any sense. This side is open. Move from the bottom side. You can go inside the base like that. Why would you ever, ever repair this? It's kind of pointless. Like, repairing makes only sense when there is only one part of the wall broken. But you can't re every repairing from the wall will cost you 2,000, you know? Which is a lot. Eagle summon is available. Gandalf won't make it out from the Tita. Trust me on that one. I believe the revive time from Gandalf is almost as long as the reload time from Balrog. So with that being said, I believe if you can do a great job, you can try to, uh, you can make it so that Gandalf is never going to be able to join the battlefield anymore, you know? I mean, does he have Condor Knight still? Like one, I see only one battalion. Is this going to be enough? He has two, okay. He has two battalions and Faramir somewhere. But he has summons. And he's gonna summon the Rohan allies, for example, to fight for the outpost. He has also Eagle Summon, if he needs to, to deal with the Muma kills and trolls. But he chooses to not to. Small fight here. The Nazgûl, the Witch King, are coming in clutch. That's an Eagle Summon. And Elven allies summon at the same time. Eagles are extremely powerful, but they are also vulnerable against archers, like... Especially with Fire Arrow. The Nazgûl is trying to kill the Eagle. 
Eagle is gonna get away, but he's, he's quite low. He can't do much anymore. He's just focusing down the walls for whatever reason. I don't get it. Just kill the Zita. Oh, he's repairing the walls now. Okay. Be right for the glory of Gondor. He has actually enough money to repair the walls like that? Oh yeah, you see Balrog is almost back up and Gandalf is gonna join the battlefield though right before this happens. There comes the Balrog summon, ladies and gentlemen. He's gonna fly inside, but a situation we have seen many, many times. Um, the second he will get inside the base, army after that will be summoned. He's gonna be able to use breath fire. And this time he was able to destroy three blacksmiths, so that's not bad at all. Cloud break, he was able to deal decent amount of damage. Uma kills, Cloud break, full base, full map for Mordor, 52,000 against 1,000 only. What a, what a fiesta game. I believe Mordor was playing it very sloppy, but yet again, even with this playstyle, he will eventually be able to win this game. I don't think that Gondo can turn this game around. He also lost Ganda after the Mumma kill, and I believe that's the final push, kinda. But you see how long the Gondor player was able to hold himself in the game. That's kinda crazy, am I right? He has not much left money left. He is not even close to reviving Gandalf anymore. Like, yeah, that's all he got. Not a single settlement outside of his base. You see, the entire map is red. And Mordor's money is come, you know, it's just like you can't deal with that. But in this kind of situations, when the games are lasting that long, you see there are no more <laughs> trees around. So <laughs> look, they are they, they lost their job, guys. That's what it is. And when this happens to you, um, always just demolish the Lamry Mills and build some slaughterhouses indeed, instead. Okay, let's keep moving on. In the same situation once again. Is he trying to revive Gandalf? No, he has also lost Faramir, by the way. There's like no units on the field right now. Let me check. Yeah, he has zero out of 200 command points. Like, he has no units. He has not a single production building anymore. Okay. Let's see. But now, just... I'm so confused. I'm so confused. What, what is... Okay, there comes the Mumakil army. Is this gonna be enough? Yeah, finally! 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 <laughs> Alright, guys. It was an absolute fiesta game, I need to say. Um, yeah, I hope you still enjoyed this one. I believe, you know, now Theoden cannot say anymore where was Gondor and Westfall fell because, you know... Gondor was falling as well in Westworld, that's what it is. And maybe we need to ask Theodin, King, my friend, where was you? Where were you when Gondor fell against Mordor on Westworld? Thank you guys so much for watching. If this was enjoyable in any way, please make sure to leave a like on this video, subscribe if you haven't already. I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourselves and as always, keep hitting like a truck and stay beyond standards. Peace out.